This is Scott from Cloak, and you're listening to The Dan Chan Show. Hey, Scott, how are you over in Atlanta, Georgia? I went there many years ago. Is it, uh, It's a very warm when I was there in the summer. How's things now? It's good, man. Um, it's actually cooled down a bit for March. It got warm uh, like two weeks ago, and then now it's it's back in the 60s to 30s, depending on the time of day, um, which I don't mind, actually, because it, it stays pretty hot here for most of the year and, uh, you know, for like six months. Of course. So of course. I'm not too into that, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually nice weather today. But yeah, it's awesome. all good, man. Awesome. So, I mean, you've got a, a bit of a wait to go, but uh, very soon on May the 26th, you're releasing your third full-length album, Black Flame Eternal. I bet this is a real tough time waiting to get this one to the masses, right? Uh, absolutely. It took months and months. And then not to mention the the process to record it and the process to mix and master it took a long time. So the wait was about a year and a half from... <laughs> You know, when we finished or I, I don't know, I, I lost track. I think we're, you know, we entered the studio basically in August of 2021. So wow. if that tells you anything, it's it's wow. a long time. It's a long time. Um, so we're extremely excited to get it out. Was it a long recording process? You know, what was the writing? Because I know that it was um, obviously it was done, it was written and conceived, I think, uh, during like you know, back in January 2020, wasn't it? The writing process. Yeah. So this has been so- a pandemic album and the waiting must be painful. Yeah. And you know, it, I don't want to look at it as a, as a, sorry, I don't want to look at it as a pandemic album because no. we kind of yeah. were already done. We, we were already done with what we needed to do for Dawn for a little bit. Um, you yeah. know, we did a tour and we had some downtime. So I actually started writing before the whole pandemic was announced. Um, and then, you know, it happened. And then, so we said, well, this is what we have to work with. So we're going to do it. Um, so it's definitely not like, Hey, we got all this time. Let's do it. It's like we were doing it already, but we did have more time because we weren't touring. So it took about a year and a half, honestly, to fully write and complete with the lyrics, like right. with all the demos, the lyrics and hashing it all out in the band room. Yeah. And then we started recording August 21 and the recording process actually took about six months um, because we had to tour in the middle of that actually when everything opened back up in October. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we, you know, the holidays and people were traveling and things like that. Um, so it took, it took a while uh, it, longer than any album that we've done and longer than honestly, I would ever want to do again. I would, I would cap it at like three months if we can. So, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it takes us a while. Our songs are pretty intricate. It takes me a while to record vocals. Uh, I like to give myself a couple days in between or, or at least a day in between sessions uh, just mm. so I'm not burnt. Um, I know a lot of guys can do that in two, three days. I'm just not like that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty particular about how, how the vocals need to sound and everything. So it took a while, but um, it's, it's here now and we're really happy with it. And I think the first single has performed well so far. So that's, I cool. think so. Well, I was going to go on to that. The single Invictus is a great taste of things to come. Does that track epitomize what the rest of the album has to offer? So that track sort of has everything. That's why we wanted to release it first. It's yeah. it's definitely a band favorite. Um, it's one of actually that that thrash riff in the beginning of the song was, yeah. I think, the first riff conceived for this album. So it's cool to kind of show that as the first thing that's that's coming out and the first riff that I came up with for the album. It kind of has you know hard and faster pace to it than our previous songs or albums. So. Um, yeah, we wanted to come out all guns blazing and make a statement with that first single. So I think, I think that's the best way to put it is that song is definitely a statement for, yeah, for, for how the album will not particularly sound for every song, but, but the vibe of the album. What themes are running through the album? You know, what do you like to write about? I think you, I think you said, it might have been you said all of our albums are created with a spiritual focus dealing with how we see life, death and everything in between. You know, can you elaborate on that? And is that what's carried through to this third album? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's even more um, more spiritually based in. Well, I shouldn't say more, but it's it's more based in, in empowerment and strength. And there's lots of themes of, of fire on the album, and hmm. fire repre- you know fire representing something that's that spreads wild and and fast and is um, it's untamed and it's it's uh, unpredictable. And I think that's a metaphor for a life that's lived very in a very free way. Yeah, and 
the black flame in occult traditions and left hand traditions represents yeah. the spirit, the spiritual flame. So that's, and to me, in, in my set of beliefs, the, the spirit is forever. It's a, if, if it's a strong spirit. So once, uh, once the fire burns out, like fire does, that's the ending of life. But the, the black flame, the, the spiritual flame is, is forever. So that's where it's kind of a long winded answer on, on the album title, black flame eternal. Well, I mean, you have said that some bands take the devil and death in a, like a tongue in cheek manner, but you guys don't. How serious are you with the dark forces? Uh, well, it depends how <laughs> it's kind of a loaded question because it depends how people view the devil yes. and, and, and darkness for us. Yeah. It's, it's a serious thing. Um, I don't know how much we really want to elaborate on, on private uh, views on that, but it's yeah. to us, it's something that represents total freedom, total empowerment and, and breaking of, of chains and breaking of boundaries and living your life as if every day were the last day and strengthening your spirit. And uh, when we talk about venturing into the darkness, it's, it's talking about going into places in the mind and, and maybe even physically that people normally are afraid to go it's about exploring the depths of your yeah. mind i mean that's that's even a throwback to the title on the first album to venomous depths um yeah. so yeah it's it's the left hand path and and satanism are definitely important aspects of the band it's it's personal for all of us and i think yeah. each of us view it in in a way that connects all four of us but each of us are individuals so i think each person has an individual take on how they go about it in their everyday lives. But it's sure. definitely something that has strengthened the core of the band and strengthened us as individuals. I'm, I remember speaking to Eric Danielson about a year ago from Wattain and he had very similar answers to that when I asked him that very similar question. So, you know, yeah, they're I, very, I, I, they're I obviously mean. definitely, they're obviously extremely serious about the way they go about things. And um, we got nothing for respect for that band. Yeah, of course. Now, as I said, this is the third cloak album. How do you feel you're evolving throughout the albums? You know, you're releasing. Well, I think this one is. Um, I think this one we may have found something that just clicked a little more for us. Um, I don't want to say we found our sound on this one, but maybe in a way we did. Uh, sometimes it takes bands a little bit to perfect what they were trying to do from day one, and yeah. I think this album represents us as individuals and as a band more i think those aggressive elements and those straightforward elements are um yeah they shine through more on this one i think everything the, the structures of the songs um you know the big choruses and and the hooks are more prominent on this album i would say and I, I don't think you guys said I'm going to quote you again. I keep quoting you tonight. You know, our goal okay. is our goal. If there is any goal, is to bring rock and roll spirit back into metal. I think you're achieving this. You know, what do you think, and why do you feel like it needed this? Man, uh, do you ever go see a band and it's just completely boring to watch on stage? <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it just time and time again, we just kept seeing these, you know, quote unquote black metal bands and just extremely boring drummers to watch and just mm -hmm. boring stage presence. And it just, there was nothing wild or untamed about it. And I think a cloak show is a mixture of that intense, wild energy that, that is a rock and roll show, but also that deep um, contemplative atmosphere that is also a black metal show. Mm. So, and I, I'm very aware that cloak is not a, pure sounding black metal band uh that's not lost on me so i i think and that's fine i mean we don't aim to be that like we don't try to be what we love about other bands we just try to do what what comes naturally to us and this just comes naturally to us sure do you mind going back to the beginning how did the band form and and how did it start how did you get you know like-minded guys together and decide on the direction that you chose I think it was, uh, it was a bit of fate you know, when you bring up, you know, like-minded in individuals. That's, it's really hard to do, uh, yeah. sometimes these yeah. days. But, um, me and Sean, the drummer, were talking about forming a band, you know, as early as early 2013 or late 2012. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Uh, but Cloak did form in 2013. The, the shell of Cloak formed then with Max and our, um, our original basis. So we, uh, we just, 
we had like-minded goals. Uh, I'm not sure why or how, but we, you know, there was a lot of conversation in the beginning of the band um, before we even did anything. And we all just agreed on, on, you know, even everything down to how we needed to look on stage and how, how the songs needed to be presented and, and the promo photos and the art and everything. Um, you know, we had done a bunch of bands in the past. And uh, so we were experienced at least in, in, in these types of things. But um, I think something to the extent of cloak was more exciting to us because it could be, there were no bounds. It could be endless. It's, it's like an endless art project is, is the way that I view cloak. It's, it's kind of like a collective and, you know, we, we do, we're very DIY still. So we do yeah. a lot, you know, I do all the videos, the editing and, and the concepts and, you know, we're, we're very hands-on with the art and graphic design, the shirts, me and Max print our own shirts because we have a screen printing company. So yeah, I mean, again, a long-winded answer, but I th- it's just something that I think is more of like a collective rather than just a band that kind of gets together and jams every week. It's, it's yeah. a lifestyle. Yeah, of course. And what's the metal like, the metal scene like in Georgia? It's actually really good. Um, a lot of people ask that and I don't think they know what to expect, but no, yeah. We, we, yeah, we get really good crowds here. Um, it's always been a, you know, the underground scene of death and black metal has always mm. been pretty tight knit. So we, we sort of know everybody, but, um, yeah, I mean, I just saw Rod and Christ and, uh, Gurria yeah. and Uada on Monday and the show packed out. So, I mean, Atlanta right. really delivers. Yeah, it's really good. That's good. Now, where does the band draw its influence from? Because I believe one of my favorite bands, Danzig, is plays quite heavy in you for you guys. <laughs> yeah we we're massive fans of everything danzig's ever done um yeah. <laughs> well well the first four danzig albums and then obviously yeah, Sam, right. Sam and misfits yeah. massive yeah. fans of that so i think we just draw influence from him as an artist and an individual because he always did shit his way he always was uh you know the the dark goat among among the sheep in music yeah, it, it, yeah. you know if you look at him in the late 80s and the in the early 90s there was no one doing what what he was really doing and he always stood out never gave a fuck always did shit his way yeah and uh that's completely inspiring to us um not to mention we all at least me and sean grew up on on bands like the misfits i mean yeah i was obsessed with that band you know from middle school on so it's uh yeah and just just I mean, if you look at the lyrics and what they're writing about as early as they were doing it, they were almost like a proto black metal band with a, with a corpse paint, with the, the gore, like the, the super dark lyrics and even like the gory death metal lyrics and stuff. So it's, it's, yeah, it's interesting. So yeah. And what are the bands? I know Motorhead feature for the rock and roll element anywhere. What else comes into it? Sure. I mean, there's Motorhead. Um, I think at this point in our career, we, uh, we look inwards. We don't really yeah. hear a band and say, Hey, let's do that. Or I, I don't mm. think we ever did, but it's sure there, there's inspiration. I mean, you know, we get like the dissection tag and all that stuff thrown on us a lot. And of course yeah. they're, they're extremely important to us, but it's a slew of different bands, man. Like the second wave black metal scene is obviously extremely important to us. Um, early U S death metal, morbid angel and death. And yeah, um <clears throat> dsi and all that stuff uh punk i grew up with punk so gbh discharge a lot of the uk punk mm. i was i mean that was my thing for years still love it um but yeah i mean it's bands like that that really it's classic bands i mean my favorite bands are still bathory and judas priest and mm. metallica and iron maiden and danzig mm. so it's you know and acdc and stuff like that so it's it's all the classic bands that are the most important to us because they had songs that you could remember. Mm, of course. What new bands are you listening to at the moment? Anything, anything pricking your ears? Um, let's see. So Necrofire, our friends from Texas just dropped, dropped a new track today. It's pretty cool. Um, on your Instagram actually. Yeah. Yeah. So they have a new album coming out, uh, around like two weeks after ours, <laughs> uh, new bands. No, I'm looking through my playlist. One of the newer <laughs> bands I, I like is uh, Lucifer's Child. It's got one of the old um, guitarists for Rotting Christ. Uh, yeah. They have a record called The Order that's really, really good. But no, man, my playlist is all, all sort of older bands right now. I mean, you know, Dark Angel and yeah. and Scorpions and Niflheim was my playlist today. But yeah. 
So. Yeah, I like I like all that sort of stuff, and uh, I can't think of a real newer. Ba- um, Gurria was really good live. I don't really yeah. listen to them a lot on record, but they yeah, were, have, they yeah, were really. Awesome. Yeah, man, they were really good live. I was really impressed. Um, they, they obviously are on the same label. Yeah. So show wise, what's on the agenda for this year? You know, the album's dropping in May. I'm sure this is going to be a big cycle for you. What What's on the agenda? So, um, yeah, we have a uh, festival in Greensboro, North Carolina with Possessed and Exciter yeah. and uh, Bat and some really cool bands. Um, it's called Carolina Chainsaw Festival. And that's right before the album drops. Um, I'm hoping we might have some vinyl in hand early to bring to that festival, but we'll nice. see. Um, and then we have a pretty big festival called Hell in the Harbor in Baltimore. It sort yeah. of took the place of Maryland Death Fest. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's like Cannibal Corpse and Napalm Death and Dying Fetus, some some pretty yeah. big bands. But and then our friends from you know Necrofire and Demiser and Sadistic Ritual are on it, so that should be a really good weekend. Um, this is actually the weekend our record drops, so it'll be perfect. Nice. What about the rest and, of the year? Uh, like Europe, yeah. God, we're we've been trying to get to Europe. Obviously, the pandemic screwed yeah, that up a bit, but um, we uh, that's the goal, man. We want to try to get there this year. Um, if not next year, but, uh, we're, we're working on a tour, hopefully for the U S tour for the fall. Um, yeah. it's still being talked about right now. Nothing's, uh, confirmed, but it, if, sure. if we get on, it should be a, should be a pretty big one for us. Sweet. So what can we expect from a cloak show? You tapped into it earlier. I mean, does your respect for the left hand path run deep through your shows? I, I'll have, say Wattain or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's a little different from theirs, but, uh, it's uh it's talking more... about keeping it alive you know the boring black metal you know the standard stuff what what are you doing to make it different yeah it's more it's more raw and unhinged and you know we don't play to click tracks or, or no. you know background samples Good. and stuff like that yeah. um as a lot of bands are now and that's fine but i think there's something kind of dangerous still about uh being a little more unhinged on stage um we just bring raw energy the entire time it's you know, we we rare, rarely are uh, just standing still. It's and Sean is an uh, incredible drummer, so it's always yeah. great to see the reaction um, from from people when when he plays. So it's uh it's hard to explain, but it's a combination of yeah that raw unhinged energy with um, more calm atmospheric parts. Uh, yeah. So I think it's a creation of uh, or not a creation, but a, a combination of um, of high and low. And, you know, where that meets in the middle is, is sort of where, is sort of where, uh, cloak lies. I think, yeah. um, it's, 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 yeah, it's that, that meeting of high and low. And I think when you see a show, you'll kind of know what I mean. Mm. Are you looking forward to playing the new tracks live? And do you ever write tracks with the live show in mind? Yeah, we, we actually, we got asked that recently. And, um, I think the more you become a live band, the more you do sort of have that in the back of your mind, at least is, you know, how is this going to come across live? Are we going to be able to play this as tight as we can live and not just, you know, on the demo or in the practice room. So um, this album is actually, it's more challenging for us to play. So it's, it's making us become better players. That's for sure. Um, We're actually practicing the night. So we are going over some new songs and, you know, relearning parts that we are, uh, you know, we got to refocus on, on these new songs since we haven't played a lot of them live yet. So we're, you know, you record something and you, then you kind of move on and you got to play yeah. shows for the old songs for a while. So we're, we're almost like relearning parts of the, uh, of these new tracks, but yeah, I'm extremely excited to answer the first part of the question. It's going to be, it's going to be much more um, intense and in your face than, than the, the previous songs live. Do you find yourself when you got the album in the can, do you find yourself not listening to it for quite a while and distancing yourself from the new album while, you know, you're waiting for the release or do you, are you listening to it consistently ready for live shows? Uh, I know the other guys might take a little bit of a step back, but I, I listen to it a lot um, right. because I Vocal go through. Thing. Yeah. I just, well, I go through my mind. I'm like, is this good enough? Is this good? Oh, okay. <laughs> like some days it'll be like, yeah, this is, I'm really happy with this. And then some days it's like, fuck, we could have done that better. Is this good? But that's just me being neurotic in my own mind. Um, it's just how I am. So with that in mind, do you, do you read reviews? Do you check them out or do you, I do. you do. do, I do. Yeah. I'm very, uh, you? do you, how do you, how do you respond to that? 
Yeah, sure. Like, of course, they're going to always, you know, you want a good review when you see a bad one. It's kind of a bummer, but I don't let it affect me to the point of I'm going to change how we do things. But um, of course, you you want to get good reviews. And I'm very uh, I'm very up on reading, you know, everything that comes out. And, uh, you know, I even check comments and, and all that stuff on YouTube, which there's obviously a lot of idiots on that site. Yeah, but um, sure. Back to the touring, who would you like to be ideally paired with on a tour? I know it's a cliche question, but who would you like? Uh, man, could... Yeah, um, let's see. Uh, I'd love to tour Behemoth. Uh, I'd love to tour uh, Necrofire. I keep bringing them up, but they actually did a, a Danzig run last May, and I would nice. love to do something like that if he ever tours again. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I would love to do, let's see, uh, I mean, if Watane ever comes back to the U.S., that would be nice. But I know they're yeah. going through some bullshit right now. Yeah. Um, they're and they're selective about the bands that they bring. Yeah. I think they, yeah, they handpick all their bills. I don't think they would, yeah, fuck with us really. Honestly, um, they're kind of more keeping it classic, which is which is super cool. Um, Possessed just announced a tour. Uh, that would be, you know, that'd be great to do something with them one day. And some of those classic bands that are kind of reforming to tour would be really mm -hmm. cool. But um, yeah, bands like that, I think, would be great for us um we can kind of combine with with different bands too you know if let's say pentagram did a tour we could probably um, pair with them fine too you know we kind of have all the elements that push up can sort of yeah we can mesh in with with different styles which is which is nice yeah how do you imagine someone listening to your music you know what's the ideal scenario when you write a track when you've got it in the can how do you think that someone would like, how would you like someone to listen to your music? Maybe a walk through the woods or, you know, laying by the fire with a glass of red wine. How, how do you want them to listen to your music? Hmm. Well, I think it depends what the person wants to get out of it. Um, yeah. You mentioned outside being in nature. Um, that would be a, that would be a scenario. Um, I don't know if that would fit this record, honestly. Maybe, maybe some of the, maybe, maybe that would fit the first record more, yeah. but this one is a little more in your face. Um, you know, obviously listening to it at night with, with, with uh, a certain atmosphere helps. Yeah. That's for, yeah. that's for sure. But, uh, I mean, you could, hey, this is a record you could drive down the highway to and, yeah. uh, and yeah. still feel, you know, similar things. It's, um, it's got that that vibe but uh it really just depends on what the person is seeking and and the individual but um yeah there's i think there's a ton of different ways people can sort of grasp onto these songs yeah now what elements do you enjoy from being in a band is it the writing the recording on the shows uh i like it all for for different reasons obviously the shows are or more of what you do you know more often so you kind of live for that live experience but there's also tons of bullshit that goes along with, with touring and playing live course, and there's a lot of yeah. technical difficulties mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not always at your own hands challenging <laughs> very challenging yeah. we're still an opening band you know still smaller so we got to play like super small yeah. stages sometimes yeah. got to rush to get on i always yeah. feel rushed before but no at the end of the day i love playing live and we all love playing live but i think uh there's something really magical about the the creative writing element of it um yeah. Once you, you know, you get that part of a song that you've been trying to work on for months and it finally clicks. And it's just like, mm. the best feeling ever. And it's only, there's something special about only you four or us four, like hearing that part and, and knowing, you know, how, how magical it is in the moment and, and knowing that it's going to go on a record for, for people to hear. There's something really um, interesting about that. It's almost like you have to keep all this such a secret for so long. And then it finally comes yeah. out. It's like a, it's like the climax of it all, which is really yeah. cool. Um, How do you I feel like about that? Man. When because I've I've released albums before, and I know that when you the whole build up to a release, and then when it's actually out and it's in the public domain, it kind of like someone's burst your bubble. You know, the, the secret's out there now. A How little bit, yeah, a little bit, yeah. There's that the anticipation is like the chase is better than the catch sometimes. Yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah, anticipation. yeah. But uh, no, I mean it. Yeah, you kind of get that like month of 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 hype around it, and then something new comes out. So it's kind of it's a very, very quick world, but Strange, um, that's baby. why it's weird, man. But that's why, uh, that's why touring exists and, and helps. Yeah, exactly. Now what's on the bucket list for Chloe? You know, what's, what's it going to take to realize you've really come far in music? What thing is it going to be? <sighs> I'd like to, like I mentioned, I'd like to get over to Europe and do a, a nice tour over there. Um, you know, a, a solid tour. Uh, I'd like to, 
I'd like to get for this album. I think our goal is to get some really solid, bigger opening slots. Um, you know, it's where we were kind of going before the pandemic. We were starting to get some cool yeah. opportunities and then it just, yeah, it just pushed us back. So we got two years to make up for, and that's, cool. that's frustrating, yeah, but um, sure. it happens. Yeah, of course. Now I often ask my U S guests this question, but who has metal the best, the U S or Europe? <laughs> um <laughs> shit it's 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 almost like a tie because i mean you know you know europe and you know uk in general has had some of the best bands ever but then you know the u.s has had like wasp and metallica yeah. and morbid angel and of course. but you know europe has had like entombed and iron maiden and so uh it's hard to say um i would say probably europe has had more bigger bands yeah. uh as a whole so uh, you know scorpions and yeah. saxon and uh you know priests and all that shit so sure. i mean europe has better festivals right sure. that's for sure that's for sure some of them one day now one track that has been released that you think from your band that think that, that sums the band up the best you know that one track that epitomizes what you've done in two albums and one track that's out now so i can play next definitely invictus why i think it um i think it represents where cloak is at this time and i think it's a perfect uh representation of of who we are as a band right now for sure awesome scott thanks for joining me on the show tonight i wish you success with the new album and hopefully the many tours that follow thanks man i really appreciate you having me 